They call me names and then they tell me you don't belong here. I, I told them this, this problem we have, it is not about your language. It is about our children. This is the NFGM podcast with Dorcas Parit. Welcome to the End FGM podcast. My name is Jeremiah Kipainoi. I spend time with change makers who are making an impact in Kenya and beyond. Each week, we listen to incredible stories of ordinary people just like you making a difference. They share their successes, failures, and what they are learning along the way. Thank you for being with me today. Let's get started. We are seated here in a bush, I'd say it's outdoors, and I am with uh, Dorcas Parit here in southern Kenya in Kimana. And she has been working with vulnerable children for a long time now and has been able to bring a contribution to their lives in terms of education and also giving them a safe space for um, for the time where they are still uh, vulnerable with their communities and allowing integration in their communities. So welcome to this podcast, Dorcas. I appreciate you being here. Thank you. We just came down here and we had a meeting with elders, ladies and uh, young people uh, talking about um, their role in the community. And this is something that you've been doing for quite some time. And so I just want to find out um, where you began. I school in uh, West Pokot, and uh, you can you can imagine West Pokot. It is the same which uh, where the FGM. It is really rampant, and it is so bad there. And I have school with those kids there, those girls. And uh, my parents they took me there when I was in class five which uh, I didn't understand what is happening to to girls. Uh, sometimes sometimes we go back to school, you get uh, most of girls, they're not yet back to school. And then uh, they told us that uh, they are still in the bush. So we were interesting to know what is happening in the bush up to our friends, our classmates. I remember one day we said we want to visit uh, uh, our friends. There were about four of them. And then we went there and find them there. They were different. Even I was shocked to see how they were looking because uh, they were having white, uh, their faces are paint with white and uh, they have a, a blanket black. I was shocked to see uh, the condition of the place because it, they were in the bush. They were free to show us what was happening in their, in their body. So and, uh, we were shocked. Myself, I was in class five. I didn't understand. And uh, it was a shock. When I went back home, when we closed the school, and I asked my mom, what is this FGM? I can see other girls, they are practicing. Uh, their parents, they are taking them to the bush and do the FGM. Another shock because uh, uh, my mom told me that um, even her, she went to undergo FGM. Where, and uh, I was like, wow. So I was like, I asked my mom, hey, if you went to FGM and I see my classmates have gone to, through FGM, what about me? She told me, yeah, it is uh, it is FGM, but uh, it is wrong to do to a girl. And uh, she told me about her experience and I was very shocked. And then, you know, my mom, she told me that, uh, she told me that uh, they do FGM because they remove steam to a girl. So she will not go out. She will not go to, to have another uh, husband or another uh, another boyfriend. She told me that uh, it is not true because uh, experience for herself, the girls, they, they, have, uh, they got their, uh, the children at home and then uh, immediately when they do FGM, they give you to a husband so it was not true so i was i understand and i was like very shocked so and then i got it I, I, these other my cousin they have gone through that but uh, my mom she really tried to to make sure we didn't do that and uh, i finished my school and then i worked in masai mara which uh, again 
I got it the same thing. It is happened to the girls, which I was very shocked. And then uh, I got married. We have five children. But uh, again, I didn't expect I'll, I'll be married with a Maasai. <laughs> so I got it myself now. I'm, I'm in love with a Maasai. And uh, we did our wedding. We came back. When I came back to see to their family, I was another shocked because I saw... I saw girls carrying children. I saw there's this another another uh, 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 this FGM continually in my life. I was like, oh, I think we need to do something to our community because now I belong to this community in uh, uh, Loitokto, uh, Kajedo Sub County, and uh, I felt that uh, God is sending us here back home to come uh, to to try to give awareness to. To, to 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 make sure these girls they don't go through what uh, other uh, our parents they went through uh, we started a school and then uh, after we started a school i started now rescuing the girls from the from early marriage and fgm and uh, keep them to school why i'm speaking about uh, fgm and uh, early marriage because fgm it is the cause of child marriage it's a prerequisite of uh, of child marriage yes it is so uh and uh, we decided to tell people to help us to do the the center which now we have the hope beyond transitional center and there it is where we we rescue kids we we do a lot of counseling they understand who they are and they understand what is fgm what has happened to their body and we take them to school amazing so um i just get back to pokot masai mara now down in here in ali tok tok and you've had over time experience with communities from different parts uh, of can- of the country especially among pastoralists communities then you now settled here and started campaigns within a community which um, is practicing something that has been done for hundreds and hundreds of years how is it like for you in communities even here where we are working people they know very well it is against the law but they are still doing it even uh, like uh, here what they I, I have experienced they take them to the border they take them to Tanzania to do FGM there and then they brought them back they do cross border um, uh, linkages with communities on the other side because it's the same community that is practicing from from the Tanzanian side yes they do that because uh, where we are bordering uh even to reach the police where it is it is uh, it is far so i'm just going to get down into nyumba kumi nyumba kumi is um it was actually launched and 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 i'd say premiered here in southern kenya by the government of kenya and now it's been very strong and very efficient in trying to deal with problems that are faced within the community uh we uh, they deal with crime they also try to secure themselves and keep into account people who are going within and outside the community now you have tapped into working with the nyumba kumi elders and ladies and the groupings have helped in uh, bringing out or flushing out cases of uh, of fgm why is it so important to do, to work with nyumba since nyumba kumi started uh, it has really helped us to campaign and to reach more people in grassroots because our aim it is to reach everyone in grassroots we don't want to leave anyone behind and uh, it has really helped us because uh, those nyumba kumi it is 10 houses which they know neighbors they know they know the problem they know what they it, it, they go through so even this campaign of fgm it has really helped us to reach to those houses because of nyumba kumi they get information so you get like uh, here in kajado county south uh, every month we normally do eight meetings we have five wards those five wards we have a, uh, 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 we have reached like uh, every corner of this place in our sub county because of nyumba kumi we have the chairman we have the balozi we have the official and they are really doing a good job now they are going to to they are they are going to the tanzania because they know now every every corner this eyes so now they are they are taking the kids there but even now we are we are we are making arrangements with the uh, the the Tanzania government official and then uh, with uh, our 
uh, government here through nyumba kumi and through the na, because nyumba kumi it is the community policy which the uh, the police uh, OSPD is the head so we are doing a, another meeting uh, next week reaching to them that we we tell them we work together as uh, Kenya and Tanzania we work together to stop this Definitely, FGM is still a big problem within these communities. And we look at this uh, from a point of administration because you say that uh, it's still under the office of the president. So these elders come together and uh, try to bring local solutions to problems that are existing in these communities. And we've seen how effective this is. And you've said that you've been able to cover a big chunk of your sub-county here. But now you are facing problems, um, cross, cross-border problems. How has it been like for you? Well, it is not easy. What I can say, it is not easy and it is very risky, which uh, we thank God for the government. It is really helping us a lot through the office of the, pres- the, office of the DC and the OSPD and uh, OCS. They are, we are really working together with the old chief. We are working together and it has really helped us. But uh, it is very risky. I remember there's a case which uh, it happened in uh, Engong, uh, the, those side in Kesanjani, which uh, were, a girl, she was, a pre, she was uh, pregnant. And uh, because she was pregnant, so she, they decided, the parents, they decided to do for her FGM. And you know what happened? They went to Tanzania, what I'm seeing, the bordering uh, problem, which they went to, to, to Tanzania and do for her FGM. And she was uh, about to get birth after two weeks. They didn't want that child to get birth because they say if she get birth uh, without that without she has not done fgm that child should be a curse so which uh, they took the ch- uh, the girl to tanzania and they did for her fgm and then they brought her back at that night the girl she bleeded bleeded it was on friday it was on on saturday so and then uh, because she was bleeding a lot because I think they tamper, you know, you can imagine you are almost getting bad and then they they just uh, done FGM and you know the way they do traditional, it was so bad. These are pregnant girls, she was pregnant. So uh, the girl, because of bleeding, uh, when the parents, they saw her, she was bleeding, they did everything or the, the, the traditional, but uh, she was still bleeding. So they rushed her to the hospital but uh, before she reached to the hospital, she died with the baby in the stomach. So when we, we went to that uh, family, they were trying to, to hide those. Uh, they were like, no, she was, she was, she, she just, uh, she was having some labor pain and then she died, you know. But uh, that lady, she was sure of what has happened, which uh, the following day, I went to the, to the DC. By then, the former DC, he was a key, Kikwa. And then uh, we called, uh, we co- and then OSPD was there, Kaemba, former. So we went to the mortuary and they told us, are you sure they did, they did FGM to her? We say yes. So uh, me and uh, one of the women, old woman, we went in there to see the body and it was fresh. She was, be- she was done like two days. It was just fresh, which even 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 if you are you you are not a doctor, you can say this is FGM because it was just fresh, which and then we went and testified, and even doctor said yeah it is true. But uh, so through that, the, when I went back there, the community they were so hungry with me, the 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 area because they were say they I have. I have uh, talk about uh, what uh, about their community, and uh, I thank God for government because they they fired the chief because chief n- knew about it, but he didn't say anything. Even when we went to the barrier, I went to the barrier, and chief was there and he knew what has happened, but he didn't say anything. So when uh, government took the the action, it was so good because they arrested the the parent and then they. The, the the chief was fired and that I thank God. I, I really appreciate that. And s- since that in that community, it is very risky. There's some places they call us names, which uh, it is it is normal. But for so far, what I can say, because of the kind of the setup, we are, we are trying to put all together people to work together, all CSOs, all people they campaign through FGM. We are trying to work together to stop this.
So you work with these communities and I know it's very difficult sometimes to change a community. Who solely believes that um, you should not, you should always, it's a way of life basically. All the villages, uh, on, all the villagers have undergone some of these practices and are drastically bringing those changes sometimes is very difficult. And uh, you've just told me that uh, sometimes you end up uh, having them retaliating basically. Uh, especially when it involves arrests and uh, um, also when it involves uh, sometimes court cases or when just they just publicly uh, when you just publicly uh, uh, proclaim that you know a uh, female genital mutilation is wrong how do you deal with it with the community because now I know that you know it's risky your life is at risk sometimes but how do you deal with it I have put a good relationship with community I have connect. When I go to this meeting, there's so many problems which they go through, especially poverty. Poverty, it is the key of this problem we can see for FGM. It is the key. How? How is it a key? It is a key because uh, this family, uh, they have nothing in the house. They don't earn anything. Like... Uh, no, no, nobody in that family has gone to school. Nobody is bringing income in that family. So you get the, they have children there. So those children, among them, there's a girl, maybe 11 years, 12 years. They, they see that is an asset, which they do FGM. And then as result of that, they, 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 they give away that girl. They sell. Because I can say they sell. Because... Uh, and uh, most of the scenario I have get, even all the kids have rescued them. They are in the center. Uh, some of them, the ones I've rescued them from the child marriage after FGM. When I ask them, they say the, the parents, they received 50,000. 50, so you can imagine 50,000 of changing your child, your girl. So that I can say it is because of poverty. Because you can imagine 15,000. 15, even when you, 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 you calculate how much the, that family has received from this uh, girl, it is very literally. So they see these kids they have, it is an asset. If it, she's a girl, it's an asset. If she's a boy. What I can say about through my experience and uh, how I'm working with my commu in my community, it, it has been not been easy, but God has really helped me so much because of the, the good relationship I've put with my people. Especially you get like, uh, sometimes I get some people, uh, they call me names. And those leaders, they some, you know, they, they see when, because they, you are doing all of what we are doing of campaigning, stop things, FGM, they see like it is uh, something, uh, they, they like, uh, why are you, are you all over? You are going everywhere uh, talking about FGM or you are going everywhere, you are, they are seeing you everywhere. So sometimes they call us names they, and then uh, sometimes you get, maybe you have gone to rescue this girl because of those leaders you get, they interfere. They call they interfere, so you get uh, this a problem there to track the information. I come from another community, and I'm married to this community. Now, this community now belongs, it is my community. I don't belong to the other community which I, I, I came from. So it has been, I, I have been having a problem because of that. Uh, sometimes they call me name because why are you coming to tell us about Stop FGM and uh, you are coming now to tell us about that and you're coming from another community. So they see like uh, they call me names and then they tell me you don't belong here and which I have really tried my best to make sure I, I told them this, this problem we have, it is not about about your com it is not about your language it is not about uh, uh, your language where you have come from it is about our children so it is something i'm trying to tell our people those interfering with this uh, campaign it is those people they know very well they say they are supposed to do it but they they do nothing so i'm want to tell our people it, Wherever this need we ha uh, this problem we have, it is not for individual. It, we need to 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 put hand together and to make sure we have solved this FGM. It is not business for one person. It is not business because of of one uh, community. It is all together in a global, and this will continue campaigning and will go to corner to corner and to make sure our kids, our girls, they are safe from. FGM. And I agree with you uh, on that because um, 
people feel like, you know, these are practice and that's what we've been doing for years. Yes. Not all communities in Kenya practice, uh, let me just focus on Kenya right now, not all of them fo- uh, practice uh, FGM, but a majority does. At least there are 22 hotspot counties here in Kenya out of a whole 47 counties. And so um, there are ways you've dealt with this uh, this problem um, within and without this county because I understand that also girls from other counties have sought yeah. re- refuge within uh, the center because of such circumstances too. We would like to, to almost bring this to a close, but um, you talked about something that has been repeated over and over and over again in these podcasts as we do them every day. I've heard about um, about poverty as a major uh, contribution to this um, uh, to this vice, and I've also heard about people not um, uh, detaching um, they, uh, they themselves from um, their cultural practices. Something that they, they believe that they've done for 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 ages. My mother has done it. My grandmother has done it. I have done it as a parent, and so my daughter should go through it. One piece of advice to anyone who is working in this campaign. Uh, someone who's probably waking up today and saying, you know, I want to begin a CBO because I need to uh, to help these girls in my communities. Uh, I want to advise anybody, the community you are, all community you are, uh, uh, like uh, uh, we have 22 uh, uh, counties which they are practicing FGM. And uh, I want to advise anybody if it is your passion you are you are working to stop this fgm and you are you have that passion to help this gas uh, to save this gas from fgm do it keep it up even if you save just one person one girl that you have done amazing it is a big thing Whatever you save, even it doesn't matter about numbers. You know, people now are talking about numbers, but we don't care about numbers. Provided you have saved just one life, that is something you've done, and God will pay you. The FGM, it will end. It will be. It will end. It will end. Because I believe if we work together in all corner. We work together. This thing will end. Since 2011, when the Prohibition of Female Genital Mutilation Act was passed on, lots of strides have been made. And 2030 is only a milestone that uh, many countries have to try uh, reach uh, by then. And uh, it's a challenge for all of us, uh, from all stakeholders, ranging from individuals campaigning on an individual capacity and also from governments. Uh, and uh, there are laws to support them. Uh, we also have um, civic uh, unions and organizations and NGOs, I'd say, people who are also playing a part in funding and supporting these activists also have a role to play. And so um, thank you very much for uh, sharing with me today and us all who listening to this podcast uh, today. It's an honor having you here. I'm sure that someone has taken, at least for me, my takeaway is um, being able to work with community leaders and that in this case, um, Nyumba Kumi, I have been here before and I have seen how people can keep, okay, they can hold accountable each other when they are uh, under Nyumba Kumi because uh, they are now responsible even legally uh, for the uh, rights and safety of their children. So thank you very much for sharing this with us. I really appreciate you being here. Uh, probably you would like to share uh, your contacts or how someone could reach you um, just in case they'd like to further this conversation. Yeah, thank you so much, even you, for coming and taking your time to come and uh, hear what I'm saying and even to hear my voice. And uh, I want to encourage even uh, uh, people, it doesn't matter if even it is you have a small organization, it doesn't matter. Or, you know, sometimes you can see you you are just started. It doesn't matter. Provided you are doing the right thing, continue the good job. It doesn't matter the big organization or your small organization. Just I want to encourage you do that. You uh, keep it up and continue to do the work, good job, your good work you are doing. If you want to reach me in social media, in Twitter, you can get me in Hope Beyond Foundation. You can get me in Twitter. You can get us in Facebook, Hope Beyond Foundation. You can get us in uh, the email, Hope Beyond Foundation uh, at Gmail dot com.
All right, so that was Dorcas Parit. Uh, she runs Hope Beyond Transition Center here uh, in the southern part of Kenya. Thank you very much for uh, being with me here today. And to all the listeners, thank you also for sticking around to the end of this podcast. My name is Jeremiah Kipainoi. Until next time, stay safe. You can get bonus materials, notes, and much more at www.kipainoi.com. K-I-P-A-I-N-O-I.com. Please remember, we all can do something. Go out and make a difference. For we all have a responsibility to make this world a better place. Goodbye.